What's up everybody, this is Jack Sputnik here and today we have some cameras with us to show you how to start shooting like a pro we have a little bit of cheating here because like many of you think that if you want to be a pro 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 you need to switch to M mode, manual mode and you have to do everything manual and you can of course, I'm not saying no but most of photographers out there, specifically those that are traveling around the world and taking beautiful photography, photographs of surrounding world and beautiful like uh, photographs of, I don't know, food, people, photographs in action basically, they do not use fully manual mode, but semi-manual mode. So if you bought your first DSLR camera or you have more advanced full frame camera or, you know, generally camera that allow you to capture like whatever you want you may be wondering where do I start with what is the best settings to start you see all these settings here all these you know dials on the top of your camera and you may be thinking uh, where do I start what is the right setting for me what is the right setting of autofocus? And, uh, <laughs> so today I will show you with two examples here. I have Sony a7 and a, a EOS, Canon EOS Rebel T7i, which is in Europe, I believe, 800D. So um, maybe I will focus on, on this Canon because it's a super, super popular camera. And in most cases, whatever system you are using, those settings that I will show you just right now will work for you. So a lot of guys out there, they think that if you want to shoot like a pro, you just need to switch to manual mode, which is this M here. Let me show you. You see? You have this top dial, the top dial button here and M stands for manual and it's, it's, it's on every camera you have this M and you think this is you know the pro mode but then you go out in this, to, this, to your city or for example you go out somewhere to have uh, you know holidays with family and you want to have a day of shooting in, like let's say you go to Portugal to Porto which is super popular and you want to capture this everyday life of Porto and you know like you know, like manipulating with these manual settings in action is really, really difficult and it's real pain. And honestly, we have a stock portfolio of almost 11,000 images right now. We shoot weddings, we shoot um, uh, interiors, and we shoot like um, family photos. Like all the subjects, we also like had some experience with industrial photography, food photography, and you know, a lot of client work. And we rarely, rarely shoot with manual mode. For interior photography, when it's slow and you have time, it's a different story and I do shoot in manual mode. But for in most cases, I use a semi-automatic mode, which is called in Canon, as you can see, AV. And here on Sony is just A. So what does this AV or A in most cameras stand for this is aperture priority mode or aperture i don't know sorry for my bad english so what does this stand for so to understand that first you need to understand what aperture is so basically your lens have aperture regulation inside so you can basically close your lens or open it wide and what does this do so basically maybe some of you heard about shallow depth of field and what shallow depth of field is so one subject is in focus and subjects behind this uh, subject is your main subject are basically out of focus so to present that is very very simple basically if I place the camera in front of my face and you see what my camera did it refocused here to, to main subject, in this case, a hand holding camera. And my face behind here, you see, is totally out of focus. You see, it's blurred. So this is called bokeh or blurry background, whatever people call this. And this thing is sharp. 
And in this case, my face, though it's pretty close from this camera, is very blurry because I'm shooting on 50 millimeter lens on 1.8 aper aperture. So, the lowest the value of aperture, the, sh the more shallow depth of field is. The higher the value of aper aperture is, the deeper this depth of field is, okay? I hope it sounds right. So if I switch now from 1.8 to let's say f11 and do again this thing, so both this camera and my face would be pretty sharp. And why this is the best mode out there to shoot action? Because in some cases, like for example, in landscapes, you want to have this almost indefinite depth of field. So you want like things in your foreground and in your background to be sharp. So in this case, you can set like your F stop to F11 or F16 even, and you are good to go. And in most cases, I would use like here 18 on this lens. You see like wide, wide angle. So on one, on a wide angle and for landscape photography, you want this aperture to be, to have bigger value. So your lens to be more closed and your depth of field to be less shallow. But for example, you want to take a beautiful portrait in this portal, let's say, or you want to take a beautiful portrait of your lady in New York, your wife in New York, okay? So in this case, you will want to have a, this shallow depth of field because the main subject, like face of your model, is important but these things in background can be very distracting so you want real quick to change your f-stop to something like if you have a bright lens like 1.8 or 1.4 even but in case of you know kit lens it will most probably be like something like 5.6 but still you can get some of this blurriness of the background even with kit lens if you use right settings so in this case, for example, if I'm shooting portrait, I would go for 55 millimeters. Let me, let me show it like that. I would go for 55 millimeters, so the longest I can, and I would open aperture as wide as I can. And let me, let me show it real quick on my here. So this is this top dial button here, not top dial, but this rotating dial here, okay? And as you look at the screen here, when I'm rotating here, you see the f-stop value is changing all the time. Let me show it be better. You see it's changing. Okay, now I'm opening it wide from 32 to 5.6. You see, now I'm on 5.6. And this is the, 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 the brightest I can go, the most open I can go, because this is only a kit lens, not a real portrait lens. But still you can achieve some awesome results with that. So basically your camera, depending on your f-stop, will adjust shutter speed. So you don't have to think about it. But there's one more tip because, you know, this automatic, automatic setting of your camera will not always be the best, okay? So there's a little trick here and in most cameras you have something like AV, like uh, exposure, quick exposure correction. On Canon Rebel T7i, it's here, it's called AV. And for example, if I grab my Sony real quick, this is here. I love Sony for this stop dial button here, where you can change your, you see? When you can change your exposure real quick, okay, like that. You can change exposure real quick, plus one, minus three, and so on and so on. But since I want to focus on most popular camera, which most of you have. In this case, this is this AV on Canon. So what I do, I press AV and I dial with this top dial here. This will quickly adjust automatic measurement, light measurement of your camera to overexpose or underexpose. And here's the tip. In most cameras, it's good to overexpose gently to get the best results. So to be super safe, plus 0.3, but in most cases, I would recommend plus 0.7. And this will bring you awesome results straight out of camera. And it's, it's easy, it's pretty easy. If you get it, 
you, it will always stay with you. So let me show you. So in this case it's plus 07, you see now on the screen, it's here exactly. You see, it's here you have plus 07. So pressing this button and rotating simultaneously this thing will change this parameter right here to overexpose or underexpose your picture. For different manufacturers, it may be organized a little bit different if you have Nikon, for example, or Pentax. <laughs> I had a lot of comments that I always forget about Pentax, so all Pentax users, those are great cameras, I love them, I used Pentax for many years, and, and you can do it on Pentax obviously too, or Olympus, Panasonic, whatever there is, plus 07 and you are good to go, or plus 0 0.3 and you are good to go. So those are universal, universal settings. There are other factors to consider, like for example, should I shoot JPEG or should I pro shoot uh, RAW? And the answer is very simple. I should RAW because I process the photos. But if you are not planning to process your photos, stay with JPEG. And in one of the future episodes, I will show you how to set your camera so that JPEG files look good straight out of the camera without processing. It is possible and of course if you should roll and process it will always look better because you have full control over your picture. There are cameras that are better with that like Fuji for example is, is pretty famous for having you know really good cameras out of the box. Um, for example I had very good experience with Olympus where you can modify a lot of parameters, you can even modify curves inside of the camera and I think Panasonic have it too, I would have to check but I'm not sure. But anyways overexposing your photos a little bit, using AV mode or A mode and um, adjusting your aperture according to your need. So the lower, up, the lower the aperture, the more shallow is depth of field, the higher the value, the more, you know, the more depth of the sharpness you get for landscapes and like lower for portraits is a basic setting you can start with. So you're good to go. You go anywhere in the world and having these simple settings will allow you to get very good results and have control over your picture. And this is like a first step, like a taste of photography, of a real photography, where you can decide if you want to have blurry background or you want to have sharp background, if you want to take landscape type of photo or portrait photo, if you want to take like this nice details of, of food, or, or of some crafts you find there in the world with this uh, blurry, blurry background. So guys, if you have any suggestions, maybe I forgot about something, please let me know in comments below or what kind of tutorial for beginners would you like to see next? Because I had some comments from you previously and I always try to take them into consideration because we are becoming kind of friends, huh? This is Jack Sputnik and I see you guys in the next episode.